to our second episode, or I, I probably should say part two of our first episode. I think David, we were talking a little bit about about the watches that we're wearing uh, at the present moment, and I think with all the story behind them, I, I don't think we really did them justice. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk a little bit more about uh, these two watches in detail today mm -hmm. um, to illustrate a little bit more what's going on in the history. And tell us a little bit more about the, the Speedmaster there. Yeah, exactly. And um, the last time, um, if you guys remember, we were, I, we were talking about what's our favorite watch right now. And, uh, and what I wanted to share more about is, um, is my favorite watch at the moment, which is the Omega uh, Speedmaster Professional, reference 3575.2. What makes this one quite interesting beyond uh, it's the fact that it, it has a white dial, which is very different from most Speedmasters that you see that have a black dial. It has a third register at the uh, total clock position that actually has a moon phase, right? Mm. Um, which is again, very uh, unique for the Speedmaster Professional. Now, um, I, I need to go back a little bit and also share that. One of the reasons why I really love this watch is that in 1999, early in my career, um, I was out and about and kind of uh, after dinner with my girlfriend, walking around, uh, stumbled into a jewelry store and I saw this and I was blown away at the beauty of a watch yeah. like this, really blown away. <laughs> but then I saw the price tag and then I came back down to earth and said, okay, well, there's no way in heck I can afford this without not eating for the next few months. And, however, it really left an indelible mark on me of how beautiful the watch is. Yep. Um, and also, kind of almost like a, a, a goal for myself to, to continuously improve and, and, mm -hmm. and earn more so that one day yep. I can afford it without going broke. Um, and luckily, um, you, know, you fast forward to some years on. Now, at this point, we're about almost 20 years on. Yeah. And uh, they stopped making this watch, um, goodness, probably back in 2003, if I recall correctly. And so none to be had, you know, of course, at the shop. But of course, now that we have various marketplaces and, mm. and sellers online, mm. yeah. I was very lucky to come across this in really tip-top condition and was able to snatch it up. Um, again, one of the reasons why I liked it is that it has this case size, a 40 millimeter case size, which I think um, is the perfect, it's the sweet spot when it comes to watches. Whether or not you're gonna wear it with your sleeved up, it's gonna not look too small. Whether with your yeah. sleeve down, if you're, if you're gonna wear it to the office, it is perfect. Mm. The other thing, I think it, what makes it my favorite watch is it's versatility on just how I wanna change the look yeah. on it. Yeah. Right now, with it with the, this kind of a camel uh, suede leather, it's, it's very casual, kind of weekend. But at the same time, it has the original bracelet. Yeah. Right? The original bracelet, which I think is a great piece uh, of engineering by mm -hmm. Omega mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, double deployant uh, two buttons on the side that makes it very secure. And so if I put that on there as well, completely different look. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the 20 millimeter legs on a 40 millimeter case is, again, you have so much versatility on mm -hmm. the types of straps that you can, that you can pair to this. Almost limitless, right? And so, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, so it's the, the size, the 40 millimeter uh, on, on the wrist, but also the, the height of the watch itself. Um, I don't remember the exact details. It, I think it's about maybe 15 or 16 yeah. millimeters. Um, and, and it just, again, it fits nicely uh, under, under a sleeve cuff if need be. Yeah. Um, then, then, of course, the color, right? The, you have this, mm. um, the, this, this white, almost pearlescent, granular look yeah. uh, to the dial, which matches with a lot of different things you're gonna wear. And, 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 and um, also, just, you know, call me weird, but I just like looking at it. Looking at the dial, looking at the intricacies, you know, looking at what the moon phase is doing. Yep. Uh, to me, it really is kind of, um, it, it is a great all-rounder as far as being able to wear it with almost any occasion. Yeah. Um, the only downside I would say about this particular reference model is that in most of your um, um, Speedmaster professionals mm. on the, the bezel itself, they're typically steel with a aluminum inlay for yeah, the tech. Yeah. This actually is a departure from the other Speedmasters where it is actually 18 karat white gold. Pretty as it is, it is kind of fragile. So any um, inadvertent accidental bump you right. will leave a little mark. The other potential downside, depending on what type of um, you know, a person you are when it comes to owning watches, is that it is a manual wine. But again, mm. this is the Lamania based movement, yeah. right? where when it comes to accuracy, highly accurate, when it comes to engagement yeah. of the actual chronograph timer, it has that nice you know, schnick, if you will, when you, when you yeah. press on it, there's no like jumping of it. Uh, but it is a manual wine watch, right? Mm. And, but you know, I don't mind, I don't mind that. You know, quite frankly, I don't mind if I have to uh, wind it every couple of days. I think it is about a uh, 50 hour power reserve or something like that. But to me, it allows me 
need the chance to really still engage with the watch. Yeah. You need to see how it's going and, and to wind yeah. it up. And I totally agree with the engagement, David. I mean, you know, winding it and feeling the lovely mm -hmm. feedback that you have, mm -hmm. David. I mean, it's a, it's a connection between your soul and, and the watch. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the Lemani move, I think another thing about horology, right? That movement was made for decades mm -hmm. um, and told and time, time. Mm -hmm accurately for so many people around the world. I mean, that's, you know, that's special. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you may have some of these uh, uh, Speedmaster purists that say, yeah. you know, the case has now been compromised because yeah. you do <laughs> have these two little buttons, one at the uh, 11 o'clock position on the side case and one at 10 to yeah. adjust the moon phase yeah. and also adjust the actual uh, the date. But um, yeah. to me, you know, when it, when it comes to saying that the uh, case has been compromised, yeah, it's rated at 100 meters, but I'm not going diving with this, right? I have plenty of other dive watches that I can and willingly go take diving, but this is not meant to be in that environment. Yeah, and you know what? The, the Speedmaster, I mean, also, you know, commonly called the Moon Watch, um, and it, it, this is certainly a little bit different to that. I kind of like the, the, the sort of the Moon phase complication here. I mean, you know, the original Moon Watch. It's called a moon watch, but it hasn't got a, a moon on it, you mm -hmm. know? And the fact that you have a moon phase here and you can see the, the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a sort of romance about it, David. I mean, it's, you know, um, if you're gonna change an iconic design, this is probably one reasonable thing to do, if you ask me. Yeah, correct. And, and like I said, you know, the original, uh, the first watch that made it to the moon, and quite frankly, you don't need the design it together again. Who's going to go to the moon, right? You know? <laughs> well, you might now, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're selling tickets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. So those are some of the reasons why uh, I think this is uh, a perfect, almost an everyday watch for me. Um, this will uh, certainly be within my collection forever, and uh, and I'm glad that you know I was able to finally pick yeah. up after that many yeah. years, and and I'm still in love with it as much as I was the first time I, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. So I, I love it. Great. You know, it's a great watch. What about you, Ken? What, what's, you, you mentioned last time, what was your favorite watch? We talked about the Zenith last time, and um, I'm still wearing that today. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's such an interesting watch on so many angles, right? And, and so many layers. If you just look at, like, peeling back the onion, this has so many layers. I think the first thing about Zenith that's just romantic is just the story, right? Um, the name, right, El Primero, the movement, you know, it suggests it's the first of something. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a bit of controversy here, but it's probably one of the first, if not the first, automatic chronograph movement um, launched in 1969. Probably the only other group that could contest that is, uh, is a collaboration, which, which you know, I'm also a big fan of, uh, yeah, between Breitling, Buren, Hoyer, and Dubois de Pras. Um, and they kind of probably got uh, an automatic chronograph used in all those different brands um, you know, in the late 60s. Um, so that's just you know a phenomenal story, right? You know, and you know, David, you talked about your your first watch, the Swatch. You know, the Swatch was the this interesting story because, like, in the Swiss Swatch, the, the Swiss quartz crisis, Swatch basically saved them, right? They gave bought them enough time to get back on their feet, and mechanical watchmaking became popular again. Um, and Zenith had a very interesting story there, right? I mean, in in, in the late sixties, so sorry, the early seventies. Zenith, because of the, you know, the, the quartz crisis, were going to stop making, uh, well, I actually had agreed to stop making automatic chronographs. And one of the employees, a guy called Charles Vermont, uh, basically hid a lot of the machines in an attic in the mm. Zenith manufacturer. And he stored a lot of the catalog of all the, the parts and so on. And um, when, the, you know, when the quartz crisis was over and things reopened, you know, thank God he did because you know, Zenith was able to sort of bring things back very, very quickly, right? I think that's just an amazing story mm -hmm. uh, of resilience and innovation and, and passion, right, mm -hmm. uh, to, to keep this brand alive. But that has knock-on effects on so many things, right? I think the Zenith, the automatic movement, the chronograph movement here was used in another extraordinarily iconic watch called the Rolex uh, Daytona, right? Mm -hmm. and. You know, they, they needed a good, reliable automatic chronograph, and that's where they went to first, right, to, to Zenith. Mm -hmm. So the impact that this has on the industry, just, you know, we can't underestimate that, right? So just tremendous, you know, incredible history, right? I think that's the other thing about uh, horology is it, it's, it's also a study of history, and mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so fascinating. But coming back to it, I mean, it's, it's also like, 
if you just look at it, it's a, it's a very beautiful timepiece, right? You've got um, you've got a, a combination of guillotine style with a sunburst style. You know, at first glance, you can see so many things. You've got the day, you've got the month, you've got the date, the time. You can. Uh, it's it's also a stopwatch being the out premiere, although it does it doesn't measure as many things. Uh, it just measures the minutes. Um, uh, given that it, it's got so many uh, complications. So I think that, and just looking at it with this off, off center asymmetrical dial, it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's lovely to look at. Uh, you know, brings a, a joy to my face as well when I mm -hmm. when I'm staring down at it like you were, in, you know, in uh, in your classroom. Um, and then the the El Primero, I think the the other beautiful thing is the you know like real horology. They have a transparent case back, so you can see the movement on the back and. It's just so beautifully decorated, right? Uh, I mean, it's just a, it's a marvel. You could almost stare at this all day. You may want, even mm -hmm. want to wear it the other way around, right? Um, and there's just so many things going on in, in here. It's it, it's not just a, a, an automatic chronograph, but as, as we mentioned in the first episode, mm -hmm. it's an annual calendar as well, right? Uh, in a collaboration with the Musée International de Horology. Um, and the curator there, uh, Ludwig Oschlem, basically came up with a very, very simplified mm -hmm. uh, annual calendar movement with just nine parts versus, you know, um, 40 parts in, in most, more traditional annual, annual calendars. So this just makes it so much more accessible. Mm -hmm. And you just need to change the date on this once a year, right? And I think it's also such a simple watch to wear. It's, it's elegant enough to wear to work, you know, mm -hmm. and to wear with a a suit and tie to fit under your cuff, but not too delicate that you need to, uh, that you can't wear in the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. To me, it's a contender for, it's a real contender for a, you know, a seven day watch where you can just keep wearing it. And, and as an annual calendar, it's great that you, you don't put it down. Uh, I think that's just another thing. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely watch to have in, in any collection and it's just so much utility and yeah, it's, that's what I, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, if I can just add to that, the, um, the, the, the detail on the dial really pulls you in. It's amazing that the different levels of textures, colors, mm. depths in a dial is really yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, but something you said just a moment ago about how um, they were able to simplify this annual calendar, to me, it, that speaks volumes. Uh, number one, not only making it more accessible, but uh, a lot more uh, serviceable. Yeah. Right, so that if, if, if something were to happen, it doesn't become a complete nightmare. Like, mm. It's not like pulling out an engine to do an oil change. <laughs> it's a more simple repair. Yeah. And, but, then, but then you think about the El Primero movement, that it came out in 1969, right? You know, something can be said for the fact that it's still being used today yeah. to, the, to the frequency and the amount that it is. Mm -hmm. That really is a testament to it, an amazing design of this movement. Yeah. yeah, no, actually, you're right there. I mean, when it was launched in 69, mm -hmm. and essentially that movement was not changed for 40 years after. They've only just recently, the new, uh, the new releases from Zenit brought it up to a, to a, a truly modern manufacturer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to be running for decades, just like with the Lemania, mm -hmm. keeping time, timing time accurately for so many users around the world, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you know, from what we shared so far, I think it's easy to to see why these are our current favorite watches <laughs> out of all the ones we have. Yeah. Right, and uh, and I hope that what we were able to share has also been informative for yeah. people that are viewing us today. Um, and and I would just say, you know, um, uh, before before we see you guys again, yeah. give us feedback. We would really love to hear yeah. what you thought about what we shared today. Um, but then also, hey, you know, we are not. Um, uh, we don't we don't have all the amount of full detail information on the watch. So if we miss something, let us know. Did yeah. we miss misspoke about something? Please let us know. So uh, please again, please subscribe and like. Give us your comments. And next time, uh, we, we hope to share with you a little bit more about our journey mm -hmm. as watch hags, watch fanatics, yeah. and have another cool watch to share. Yeah, and you know, for your share with us also your your favorite watch of the moment and. You know, we'll, it'll be very interesting for us to, to take a look if we can force one to, to share a little bit our thoughts about that. That would be really fantastic as well. Yeah. So until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.